Together they sat in hushed tranquility as the projector illuminated the vinyl screen, the only source of light in the room. And just as Havoc had predicted, the condition of the reel had reached a point of decay beyond coherence. If Gillette could still find enjoyment with each viewing, it must have stemmed from her own recollection of the film's original lifespan. Because beyond the occasional flicker of an image and a never-ending reign of static, the movie had become unwatchable. But when Havoc looked over to Gillette, he noticed the same sense of wonderment in her eyes from when they were kids. It amused him to bear witness to such an event. The film itself, now a pale imitation of what it had been when it first developed, still managed to hold her attention. And even though the dialogue had become incoherent chatter, she quoted all her favorite moments as each actor's lips mouthed their rehearsed lines. While he had never read the same book twice, Havoc considered his fascination with the written word a blessing. Because should he ever feel the desire to revisit a past read in the future, the condition of the novel would, he theorized, remain untouched by the passing of time. Something he couldn't say for Gillette's love of cinema. Eventually, she would find herself left with nothing but an empty screen, and she would have to rely solely on her memory to keep it all alive. Why do you keep watching these, he asked. If all you end up seeing is a clear image every few minutes, with a distorted sound bite here and there, why even bother? I like to think of this as time travel, she said. Her eyes remain locked on the screen, mesmerized by every fleeting image. If only for a minute or two, my mind will wander off. It'll find itself transported to whenever these films were made. Life seemed easy then. You could lose yourself in a beautiful moment and stay there for a while. Let it consume you. Two strangers could enjoy a night out in an unfamiliar town. You can fall in love with someone you just met, even if the odds were stacked against you. That you would only have the one night together. It's inspiring. Gillette's words sat with him for a bit while the movie continued to play. He turned his attention toward the screen and caught a moment where the film's reel hadn't been entirely erased. He could see the two main characters walking through the city of Vienna, enjoying the act of getting to know one another. And it was here that Havoc would shamelessly admit film's superiority over literature, where one could only imagine the beauty of the world presented in the novel, entirely reliant on the author's ability to paint with words. A motion picture actually took place in such breathtaking environments. You could find yourself inhabiting the world's landscape displayed on the screen before you and get lost in the details as they pass by.